Hello guys and welcome to the STPL. My name is Kix. You're joining me here for some STPL action on early time, or an, on an earlier time, should I say, on a Sunday. Tomorrow is my 30th birthday, so I am going to chill out tonight, not do really anything, and just enjoy the final night of my uh, 20s. So it's going to be a bit weird turning 30, but here we go. We made it. We didn't die, which is the important thing. Uh, we, made, we made it till 30, so hopefully we can make it a lot further than that. I'm planning to be one of the oldest people when I get to like 130 or something. And honestly, when I was really young, I thought 30 was old, but genuinely I feel no different now to how I felt when I was 18. Like, realistically, being 30 is like nothing. Right, 30 is so young still. Like, I still haven't figured out how to live life. Like, it may, I still do not understand being an adult, and I've been an adult now for 12 years. So, like, I, I think I don't, I don't think that's going to be changing anytime soon either. Uh, but this is going to be the, uh, bleh, this is going to be today's STPL. It's the final day of the group stage of the STPL season three. Uh, kind of cool we've got this far. We've had a relatively weird group stage. It's been quite close, but we've uh, we've had a like a lot of weird dropouts. We've had a few weird walkovers as well. But either way, the games we've had have been fantastic. And today we actually have a very important set of matches because a lot can change in these two matches. A lot of the seeding can change. One of the teams may change as well. Uh, now, just in case you don't know the format of the STPL, all the series are best of five outside of the grand finals, which are best of seven. Set one to four, the lineups are selected in advance, and all the games are played at the same time. And then set five, if we make it to it, if the teams are tied up two to two, is the ace match, or it'll be set seven in the grand finals, of course, which we've had two ace matches in both of our grand finals so far. Uh, so hopefully, we'll get another one of those. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, now, the maps, we've had a really good map pool this season, I think, so looking forward to seeing more of those. And there's the prize pool distribution, just in case you're interested. Now, uh, we can't really start off today without looking at the team rankings, because this is a very important thing for today. So the teams we're going to be have playing is Red versus IRK and Net Wars versus Clan Revolution. If we, who is it? I've forgotten who is actually playing. Uh, one second. Uh, it's DM versus Net Wars and Red versus IRK. Now, for DM versus Net Wars, if DM win, they can't get into the playoffs. But if they win, they will stop Net Wars from being able to get the second place seed, which automatically grants them a position into the semi final, which I know they're definitely going to be looking for. Uh, especially given the fact that Valhalla have got that extra penalty loss, so they are one below so if net wars can win here that means they will be going into that second place seed now irk are going to be playing against red now if red win that series it means clan revolution will be knocked out of the playoff positions only the top six teams are going to be able to make their way through uh it looks like irk i mean if irk can win they'll at least go into fourth most likely Oh, they'll keep their position, but if they lose, of course, they're going to drop down lower, uh, which is something they definitely don't want. Now, it does 
it feels kind of weird. I guess with the penalty points, it kind of messes up things, but most of the teams who have got 10 or 11 games, have some, or especially if they've got 11 games, have either played all their games for the season, or in some cases, they've got penalty losses, which is, especially in Bull's case, why they've got so many uh, matches played. But we've got a good set of teams coming up today, so it should be a lot of fun. Now, let's actually have a look at our first team. It's going to be red. Uh, red, one of the better European teams in the STPL. Definitely a cool team. They're a very close-knit group of friends as well, which is why watching them play is always very fun. They've got a lot of really, really good players. Uh, we don't see Eriador this week, is, which is quite interesting, but we're going to have the return of Cryo. Cryo hasn't played in the STPL, I think, for a very long time, at least from what I remember. Uh, and then we've got players like Horatos, SOS Toss, and Talent as well, so... We've got uh, some of the red players in chat as well, like uh, Rota, he's out there cheering for red, so he's definitely going to want them to win, he wants them in the playoffs. And let's see if their opponents, who are going to be IRK, who are without a doubt one of the best the one of the best teams outside of Korea, and with their roster, I mean, you can see why. I mean, they've got True Touch and DeWalt here today, they've also got Oya, who's been doing an incredible job in the STPL, and Vardy's been doing quite well as well, so... It's going to be a little bit tough for Red to take a series win here. But realistically, even if Red cannot win this series, it's not the end of the road for them. Uh, they still play in BWCL. I think they'll probably end up playing in Season 4 of STPL. At least I'm hoping they do, because I really enjoy watching Red. But IRK are definitely going to put their game faces on for this one, because they want a better seed if they can. Uh, now, I don't think IRK can get the second place seed anymore. So that's only going to be for Net Wars, but obviously if they lose, they've got a chance of dropping further down. So they don't want that. Let's have a look at the lineups we're going to have today. We're going to start with the TBZ Kralk versus True Touch. That should be a very, very fun matchup. We're going to have Talent versus Oye in a PvP, because of course we've got a PvP on Hitchhiker, because that happens a lot. Then we've got the third match was unfortunately a walkover in favor of IRK. Uh, wait, was... Was that it? Yeah, I think Horatos didn't make it. Let me just double check. Yeah, it was a walkover in favor of DeWalt. So there was no game three played on Byzantium 3. So uh, Red are definitely going to have to put up a better fight on the other three maps if they want a chance of winning. And then we're going to have SOS Toss against Vadi. So uh, Arota saying he overslept his alarm. Wait, Horatos lives in Germany, right? Why was he waking up? <laughs> Why was he waking up in the evening? Why didn't he wake up in the morning? <laughs> oh well, I guess people live like interesting lives, so I didn't wake up till 11am 11, 11 this morning. I was up until like half two in the morning doing karaoke and VR chat, so yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, but that was kind of cool. Ah, uh, okay, apparently, okay, so... DeWalt and Master Ray, who's Horatos, agreed to play in the morning because uh, DeWalt couldn't play in the evening and then apparently Horatos overslept. That's a little bit unfortunate, but it happens. It's not too much of a big deal. Uh, let's have a look at the first two players we've got here. Now, we've got Cryok coming out here. This is actually the first time in a few weeks that he's played... Uh, it's only the first... It's the only the second time... Yeah, Master... Horatos is Master Ray. And it's only the second time in Season 3 that Cryok has actually played. I don't know why he's been so inactive, uh, but it's really showed for Red, because Cryok in previous seasons was a very, very strong pillar of his team. So it's a little bit unfortunate we've not seen more of Cryok this season. Hopefully we'll see more of him next season, and if they make it into the playoffs, maybe we'll see him there. Uh, but they will need to play him here, because essentially if you don't know the way the season works, uh, the way the playoffs works to kind of make it so play or teams couldn't add just an incredibly good player for the playoffs what we've done is we've made it so players need to play in two separate weeks of group stage games uh, to be able to play in the playoffs so cryoc is just about making it in here uh, so very very close living leaving it on the edge but cryoc's done really well in the scpl previously 58% overall and 88% win rate against Zerg as well, which is just absolutely ridiculous. He's 8 to 1 over Zerg. Like, who does that? Who does that? Cryog does. And uh, his opponent, though, it's going to be the one, the only, True Touch himself, one of the kings of foreign Zerg. He's not done too well in the STPL against Terran, though. Uh, this is not great. 
for True Touch, especially when you look at the statistical difference, but obviously all that comes down to is what happens on the day. It's a best of one on a Sunday every week. And can we see Cryok take down one of the best foreign Zergs? Or is True Touch going to start to work his way back in to a better win rate against Terran? Because he's doing well overall. So, yeah, I'm, I'm celebrating the last night of my 20s by relaxing and doing nothing. Which is basically what my, my 20s has been. And to be honest, I'm happy with that. I like that. I like my relaxing days. I some people take time off work to go places. Guess what? I'm off this week. I'm off work, and I'm off work to sit and do basically absolutely nothing. I'm going to play Half-Life Alex, Pavlov, probably try and make some stuff for the STPL, and play VR chat. That's basically going to be my week off next week, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to watch some anime as well, because there's a few series I want to watch, so going to get through those. But let's have a look at the map we're going into. It's going to be La Mancha. This should be a fun matchup for this map. Uh, Zerg have actually had a little bit of an edge here over Terran uh, with 4 for 2. And the games on this map in TVZ are usually quite fast. And given the players we've got, Cryok is a relatively standard player but does play a little bit aggressive sometimes. But True Touch has been known to pull out a bit of aggression when he wants to. So I'd be interested to see how this goes. Let's find out as we get into game number one. It's True Touch versus Cryok. Okay, starting us off here in the top left-hand corner in the teal, fighting for IRK. It's one of the kings of foreign Zerg. It's True Touch. And his opponent spawning up here in the royal blue. I think this is royal blue. It might be navy blue. I can never remember which one it is. Fighting for red from Germany. It's Cryok. Now, Cryok has always been one of the better foreign Terrans, but he's never really been the absolute top level. If you were to kind of put foreign players into tier lists, I would say the likes of Koga, Terra, and maybe just Koga and Terra these days would be S rank. And then in A rank, I would say you have Cryok. Now, Cryok is going for an 8 racks in the middle of the map here, so he's going to try and pull the wall over. Oh, it's going to be, a, oh my god, it's going to be a BBS. He's going to try and BBS True Touch here. Is this going to work? Is True Touch going to play this very greedily? Is he going to go for a 2 hatch, a 12 hatch here? Because if he does, this could make this series very, very interesting. Another 3 drones are being connect or being completed here. And a hatchery is going to be coming down on 12 supply. And this could be a very dangerous moment in this game for True Touch. Because Cryarch... He's pulling the wall over his opponent's eyes here. Now, this will be scouted. But as a matter of fact, it probably won't be scouted by this drone for a very long time. This is a very nice position for this. Now, Krak, of course, does need to scout where his opponent is. His economy, when you go for this build, is not great. But he will be going for a lot of Marines. And he's probably going to pull his SCVs as well. Just to go for the quickest possible win. Now, he really should be scouting to the top left with this... Uh, SCV and that bottom left of oh, the bottom right SCV over to the bottom left this means there is absolutely no way that True Touch is going to scout this at least for the time being now this scout coming out of the bottom right could even be worse if True Touch can see it because he'll think that he's going at a completely normal time three marines are out already and the pool is not even completed yet the gas is done gas is being mined but is it going to be enough Lings are very strong against early marines if you can micro correctly but when you're bbsing and you went for a 12 hatch this is the counter and oh no he may even lose an overlord here this would actually be completely massive if he gets supply blocked he's not going to be able to build any lings looks like the first lings are on the way but no more will be able to be completed here this is a massive pick off on the overlord the uh, marines gonna fall back the drones getting in position to try and surround two drones have gone down already the marines are not in the bunker which is actually a pretty important moment the marines get taken down but four drones fall 
and there's no additional links coming. This is it. He has to break the bunker with this. And oh my god, the repair not coming in quick enough. There's not any repair coming down on the bunker. The Marines, are they going to be able to kill the links? It looks like the links popping out. The Marines finding their way through. But this is only six drones and four Marines are up. It looks like True Touch may have fallen in this game. He got the bunker, but it doesn't matter. Cryop in an incredible position now. And this is so, so clutch. Cryok is going to put True Touch down another game against Terran. And he is going to put Red one step closer to the playoffs, which is absolutely insane. Looks like he is going to fall back. Cryok's Marine Micro throughout this has been pretty good so far. Cryok or True Touch is down to three drones. Even if he manages to get Lings, he is going to be so unbelievably far behind. Now looks like the Ling's going to be trying to move forward to take out the Marines. Look at the Micro coming in from Cryog. Really nice splitting, just making this harder and harder. And I think this is it. There it is. GG. True Touch taps out. And there we go. I thank you, Monaris, for the $2.53 donation. I don't get what the uh, number's for, but thank you so, so much. Okay. So, Cryog. Opens the series with a bit of a surprise there. I think True Touch is going to be very shocked by that game because Cryok is usually a relatively straight up player. He usually plays pretty standard against Zerg, but he's just showing why he's so good against Zerg in the SCPL. He comes out with these cool builds, these cool plan things against his opponents. He knew that True Touch was most likely going to go for a 12 hatch, and he exploited that perfectly. So. Let's head into a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to game number two. It's going to be Talent versus Oya on Hitchhiker. EPL Season 3. Yeah. STPL does. Bio TVP. Wow. No problem. We got dragons to defend. Yeah. STPL does. STPL does. Mass Scout. Oh, I'm so afraid. We got Hydralis to defend. Yes. STPL. STPL. Fantastic production. Fantastic casters. Fantastic prize pool. Only in STPL. I'm about to overload my aggression inhibitors. Okay guys, welcome back. We're going to be heading into game number two of today's first SCPL series. We just saw True Touch get taken down by Cryok, and it's going to be up to Red Talent here to keep the series alive for Red. They of course did get a walkover loss in game three, so if they can win here, we could very, very possibly be looking at a Red victory overall, or possibly even an ace match. Which is kind of good, so... Let's see how Talent's going to do, at least in the SCPL against Protoss. He's not done as well, but he's not got the biggest sample size. He is a relatively newer player. Well, I say he's a newer player, but he was playing for Red back in Season 1? Yeah, that would have been Season season 1, wouldn't it? Great Barrier Reef on the Mancha. So, kind of cool uh, seeing him back in Season 2. He's played a little bit more consistently in Season 2, so... That's how we're going to go from there. But let's have a look at his opponent. It's going to be the one, the only, the Swedish player, Oya. Oya, a very, very good Protoss player for IRK. He's done very consistently well throughout the entire SCPL. 55% win rate over 38 games is incredibly good. And he's got a 53% win rate over Protoss as well. So 
everything is looking good for Oya. Talent is going to be up against it here. And if Oya can't win this game, it's going to look a lot worse for IRK. Even though IRK losing this and not going to lose their position in the finals, uh, in the playoffs. If IRK can win this series, they're going to be saving Clan Rev. So this is a little bit of an interesting situation for them to be in. Uh, but let's have a look at the map they're going into. It is going to be Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker, one of the more older maps in the STPL, was recently used in the latest ASL season, as well as the ladder. Very, very fun two-player map. It's actually a very, very fun map for PvP as well. And the games on here don't usually end up being too long, although we have had a 40-minute PvP here before. So let's see. And it, it even contained Oya. So Oya's actually played on this map five times, by the way, and he's got a positive win rate on it. So let's see if that's going to matter as we get into game number two. Okay, starting us up here in the top left-hand corner from the US of A, it's Talon in the red, fighting for red. And his opponent spawning down here in the blue, fighting for IRK from Sweden, it's Oya. Okay, so let's see what this PvP is going to bring us. We've had some long PvPs, we've had some short PvPs. And the good thing is, we've got both players building their pylon in their main base. So we're not going to have a super quick game, I don't think, here. But you can never tell, especially when Oya is involved. He is a very aggressive player. Not as aggressive as Favorite, if I remember correctly, but still pretty good. Talent, unfortunately, the sample size of his games is not big enough for me to remember all of them. Uh, so I don't really know too much about his style as much. Uh, he's obviously played a lot this season. I don't think he's actually played that many PvPs this season. Yeah, he's only played one PvP this season. His last PvPs were back in 2019, so it's been a while. Mind, mind flare and chat saying, oh, PvP yawns. PvP is amazing. Like, all of the matchups in Brood War are actually amazing. ZVZ is amazing, but I'd say it's the worst matchup. Like, ZVZ, I like it. I like watching it. But it feels like ZVZ is more of a... The way... Okay, so... ZVZ reminds me a lot of StarCraft 2. Where, essentially, you just have a lot of... Pl or both players building up a load of stuff. And then, all of a sudden, the game ends after one engagement. Like, ZBZ, as soon as you actually engage, the game just ends, because one person is going to win. It's it's very, very rare that one player, or both players, will trade super evenly in ZBZ. It's usually one-sided. And it means, like, as soon as you get to muters, that's it. Like, there's, there's not really a way out of mutalisks. We've got some matchup discussion going on in chat as well. Looks like Yufing likes TVP the most. Rota likes PvP the most. I'd say TVT is my favorite. I think TVT is actually my favorite matchup overall, uh, but TVP is my favorite one outside of that. I only really don't like TVZ because, at least recently, TVZ isn't as interesting as it used to be, because TVZ seems to have got a lot more one sided. Like, either the Zerg player just completely dominates with some all-in, or the Terran player wins. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Uh, looks like we are going to have Talon getting a Zealot into the main base this turn. Oh, he's actually managed to get a probe so far. Very nice control here by Oya. That's perfectly, perfectly cleaned up. And while we've got a little bit of a lull here, while both, while both players just kind of build up a little bit, I'll go through my matchup recommendations. My top one is TVT. For me, it goes TVT, TVP, PVZ, TVZ, PVP, ZVZ. I prefer PVZ to TVZ these days. 
Like, PvZ back in the day was awful. Like, I hated watching PvZ in Pro League unless it was BC or Best playing, or Afrotoss as well, right? If it base essentially, if it was not a not an SK Telecom T1 Protoss, I wouldn't watch it. Because I didn't like Protoss that much. I didn't really care for any Protoss players in PvZ. And all of the games were just the same. Like, it was mostly just Hydro Bursts. But recently, PvZ, especially with the like introduction of more Dark Archons into the play, especially from Best, has become really, really interesting. It's no longer a race of, can I get Storm quick enough not to die to a Hydro Burst? Like, that was all it was. <laughs> it's like, am I going to get Storm quick enough, or am I just going to die to three Hatch Hydra? TVT, the only reason why I like it so much is because of how it affects the map. Okay, here we go. Looks like we are going to get into an engagement in this PvP. Oh, you're going to try and break up the ramp. Not going to be able to. Going to pull back without taking too much damage. So that's pretty damn good. Talent using scouting pylons as well. Just That's a little bit better. We've got a scouting pylon coming in for Oya as well. Just to defend against, um, against shuttles. Now, uh, the reason why I think TVT is my favorite matchup. I'm obviously, like, I've been nicknamed the Map Man, right? But the reason is, is because in TVT, every single inch of the map actually matters. Like in most of the other matchups, like, you can have a spot on the map, like say for example, this area here. In every other matchup, this is basically pointless. Like units may run through there, but you would never have anything there normally. In TVT, you can have a turret there, you can have two tanks or something. Like every single part of the map matters. I am not Terran biased, given the fact I prefer PvZ over TVZ. If I was Terran biased, I would think TVZ was better. I just love the way that every inch of the map in TVT is used. I love it. Like, an asymm asymmetrical maps, especially three a three-player map, TVT is brilliant. Like, uh, if you look back at Flash vs. Firebat Hero or Moonglaive, that is one of the best Brood War games of all time. It all could, like the whole map was mined out other than one of the mains. I uh, know it was one of the naturals, sorry. And both players were constantly fighting over it over and over because it was the only place you could expand to. It was so good. It's such a good game. Admittedly, there can be some boring TVTs, which I guess is why people don't like it overall, but. I just love even when the even when the map gets completely split in half. I think it was uh, Nos Crane. You like dropped behind Firebat's heroes units and came in from the other side as well. Ah, uh, looks like one of these scouting pylons is going to be taken down by Oya in this game. Sorry for not talking about the PvP as much, but not really too much been happening. Looks like Oya trying to expand, which could be a bit of a problem here. We do have a shuttle, which is going to help Talon. And remember, guys, if Red win this series, they will knock Clan Revolution out of the playoffs. And Rev are so unbelievably close to making it to the playoffs this season. And looks like we are going to have Reavers or Dragoons pushing into Reavers. This is not what you want to do. Looks like the Shuttle Micro is pretty good, but the Shuttle goes down, which means this army is going to be stuck here. The Reaver is not going to get away, I don't think. It could do, but it's very, very low. He definitely shouldn't be pushing back into this. You push into this, you're going to die. But this... Oh my god, this Reaver is so, so close. Oh, looks like we do have one of the uh, Dragoons sacrificing itself. One of the Observers does go down. That is Talents. So there's going to be no further... Oh, this Reaver's going to die. And it's going to die with full Scarabs as well. That's actually a pretty big deal. That's a lot of minerals that have gone into those scarabs that will not be used. The fact that the shuttle went down is a big, big problem. Obviously, Oya doesn't really need a shuttle because he can just defend. But the expansion by Talon going to be a lot slower. And Oya making great use of the map features there to be able to hold on to it. And obviously to rebuild the shuttle, you have to take time out of rebuilding your observer, which you lost. 
which means DTs can be a little bit stronger a little bit later on uh, if you don't have too many observers. But we're going to see the Citadel coming in at least for Talon. Oh, yeah, should be going for his soon as well. Uh, sorry, other way around. But, um... The fact that Oya has got such a massive advantage in workers gives him a big, big advantage in this game. Now Oya going to get ready to push through on the right hand side. And this is going to give him the ability to stop a possible third base from talent coming up. And also push the main, uh, which is a very big deal in PvP. So we'll have to watch out how that's going to go now. Oya is interestingly going to give up a couple of pylons here himself, because if Talon pushes forward, he can kill these quite easily, but it is just going to delay the push that comes through. Now with the Citadel being a lot quicker for Oya, the Templar Archives is going to be quicker, this means Storm is going to be quicker, and so is Zealot Leg Speed. Now Zealot Legs is one of the most important upgrades in PvP. Usually, like especially early game, Zealots are not too important, but the later the game goes on, Zealots are actually critical in this matchup. Dragoons kind of lose their... They, they don't lose their utility because they're still incredibly good. They're still a main part of your PvP army. But Zealots force the Dragoons to move back. They get on top of all the other units, and they really force Splash, which is the main thing, because... To deal with Zealots properly, you need either a lot of Archons, you need very good Storms, which are also going to hit your own units, which is what you don't want, or you just keep building Reavers, but no one really keeps building Reavers just because they are so much harder to control. They're very... Reavers are this weird situation where they're incredibly powerful, but they're also very weak. Like, it's very hard to keep them alive, and when you're going into a later game PvP engagement, you don't want to have to be thinking about the Reavers, because you have to dodge storms, you have to get your Zealots on top of the other units, and it's tough. It's tough to engage the later PvP goes on, and especially on a- oh my god, losing another Observer. Talon is really struggling to keep these Observers alive here, and now that the Templar Archives is done, I wonder if he's just going to go into some DTs. That actually wouldn't be a bad decision. If you DT round the back side here, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. Now, Talon is getting ready to push this right-hand side. The Observer is going to see this most likely, which is actually a pretty big deal as well. We've got an Observer coming back into the main. Yeah, here we go. Oh, he is going to see the units coming through. So he's going to know that he has to defend back here. But given the fact he's got an Observer over the main base, he can actually go and check the Natural. And if he sees that the Natural is empty, he's just going to push. Because if you push in PvP through the natural, like, how does Talent get his units back? He doesn't. Like, his units are basically stuck here now. Now, it looks like he is going to fall back because he knows that he's been spotted. Or is he waiting for the Observer? No, it doesn't look like he is, but we've got the Reavers actually flying through the middle of the map. This is very risky. Looks like some of the Dragoons going to get separated here from the main army. Now, with the fact there's no Reavers here for either player, it's actually a pretty big deal. But we've got two Observers checking out the shot right now. We've got a lot of attacking going so going on somewhere, but I can't quite figure out where it is. That looks like it's still up here. So two of the Reavers going to come in. Are we going to get some good engagements with the Scarabs? There's a lot of army coming in here for Oya. Talon does not have the units here to engage this. If he can get some godlike Scarabs, maybe... He can hold on, but he is going to have to be very careful. There's a lot of Dragoons that's falling. He's lost a ton of supply. Uh, but there we go. Cast Amuse. The stream is early because I want to chill out tonight. And if the, like, the, the teams we've got, I thought the series could be quite long. Uh, but it looks like this could be the nail in the coffin because Talon is in such an awful position. He's going to lose another Observer. Oh my goodness, losing so many observers is such a- wait, was that the observer or was that the shuttle? I think that may have been the shuttle. Uh, but looks like we've got some zealots running through the middle of the map here. This is definitely another big, big problem. The scarabs have been fantastic so far, though. Six kills on these reavers, definitely helping out Hold On. But Talon is down, like, 50 supply. But we've got units coming into the main. The Zealot actually just turn around and attack the Zealot with the Reaver. Like, oh my goodness. Oh no, two Reavers coming into the main. This could be game over. Looks like more and more units heading up to the top right. A lot of... 
A lot of units have gone down. The Dragoons pushing in from the top. The Zealots pushing in through the middle. This is a Protoss sandwich here, and Talon is the filling, because Oya is coming in from every single possible angle to try and break his way through. A lot of the Dragoons have fallen, but Talon is down 30 supply in workers. He's down 60 supply plus overall. And this is just a little bit too little for, for Talon. I don't know how he's going to hold on here. He's doing his best. He's valiantly trying to hold on. But oh, that Scarab was massive. 11 workers are all that remains. A fourth base is coming up here for Oya in the bottom left. And the third base is up as well. GG. Talon taps out. And Oya keeps the dream alive in the series for Ayake. So that was a pretty damn good game there by Oya. Oh yeah, he really outclassed Talent there. It was looking close for a while, but after Talent pushed in quite early on, he just couldn't recover. Now, game three was a walkover in favor of IRK, so it's going to be up to SOS Toss to keep Red alive in the series. Can he secure a place for an ace match? Can they get themselves into the playoffs? So let's find out when we get back after this short break. Toss a coin to your content creators, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty, oh, oh, oh. Toss a coin to your content creators, a friend of humanity. Okay guys, welcome back. The current score is 2 to 1 in favor of IRK with IRK getting a walkover win over Horatos, which is a little bit unfortunate for us, but still Red still have a chance to keep the dream alive in the series. They're going to be fighting against IRK's Vani here. A newer player to the STPL. He's played a lot in season 2, uh or a lot in season 3, sorry, but he's a very old school player from Sweden as far as I'm aware. And he's done pretty well for himself, a 60% win rate overall, 100% win rate against Protoss over the two games he's played. It's not the biggest sample size, but it's not the end of the world either. We're going to have SOS Toss fighting for red. He's not won a game so far, but can this be the series he pulls it back? Can he get red to an ace match? Or are IRK going to secure Clan Revolution's place in the playoffs? We're going to be heading into Core Breach, and let's find out. Beautiful singing. Ah, oh, thank you, Angry Popka, for the three dollar donation, man. Means a lot. Okay, starting us off here in the bottom right hand corner is going to be in the yellow, fighting for red. It's SOS Toss. And spawning us off here in the top right hand corner in the red, fighting for RK. It's Vody. 
Now this map, I would usually believe it should go long, but we've had a lot of very short games on this map. Uh, we see a lot of players going for a lot of cheese here. There's a lot of very aggressive options you can go for. Now we've not seen too many PVTs here. We've only had uh, two of them. One of them was a walkover, and the other one was Nyam Nam for White Clan in week one, taking down GHKZ, and that was a 20 minute game, so... Let's see if we're going to have a long game to round out the series, or maybe take us to an ace match, or are we going to have a quick one? Uh, we've seen a lot more. Oh, looks like SOS Toss has given up before the game's even begun, so this is not a good sign. I will say, one bit of advice I've got for anyone who's maybe not feeling like they're good, at, good to play a tournament level game, just do it. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to relate this back to me learning Japanese, because I'm really weird like that, but essentially, you can't lose if you don't try. Or you can't win if you don't try, should I say. Like, you've got to at least try or you're never going to have a chance. Like, you have to at least attempt doing something, otherwise you're never going to- you're never going to do it, right? If you give up before it even begins, then that's it. I mean, the thing is SCP, like, SOS Toss is in the game, right? With his message, it sounds like he's already given up. And if you've given up before you've even really tried, you're gonna kind of guarantee yourself to lose. Like, and that's not good. Like, I'm relating this to me learning Japanese because I've, like, on VRChat, I've met a lot of other foreign, like, a lot of other non-Japanese people trying to learn Japanese who are a lot lower level than I am, and I'm not- I wouldn't say I'm brilliant, like, I would not rate myself, but I can hold a decent conversation for the most part and everything like that. But, like, there's some people who are, like, super new, and they just don't attempt to try and use it, and it's like, if you don't at least try, you can't get better. Like, I met this English person who's, like, a university student studying Japanese at uni for one year or whatever, and she just doesn't want to speak to Japanese people with it. And it's like... Why? Like, she cited the reasons are that, like, Japanese people aren't very... I mean, everyone knows this, but, like... For the most part, at least... Uh, societally, Japanese people aren't very direct. I mean, English people are kind of like that as well. At least in some cases. Like, I, I find it very hard to say no. And yeah, the, the Nexus is off position. Because on this map, there is these floor gun traps, which you can see here. Uh, which are invisible until you can scout them with a Observer. Uh, it means Zerg can get them very, get their base on position, but other players need to do it. We've got a two-fact coming in from Vardy. Uh, we're just going back to my other off-center point a second. Like... The reason why she doesn't want to speak to Japanese people is because she like she knows they're not going to correct her. But then, if you're not going to speak to native people, which is something I didn't do for a very long time, like I've been learning Japanese for nearly 10 years, and until two months ago I'd never actually spoken to another person using it. Right, and that's not good, because at the end of the day, even though I was scared to start talking to natives when I didn't feel like my speaking was very good, until I started speaking it, I was never going to get any better at it, right? And I, over these past two months, I've improved so much more because I'm just using it with a lot of native speakers, you know? And, like, my pronunciation is a lot better now as well, I would say. Although, my pronunciation sounds Korean when I'm speaking Japanese, apparently. I've had Korean people randomly start talking to me in Korean, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. But we've got a Robo facility coming up with a Citadel, so it's going to be most likely a DT drop coming in here from SOS Toss. He was saying how much he's going to get destroyed, and he's trying to be, he's trying to kind of pull the wall over his opponent's eyes. Maybe this was actually a chat craft tactic here. And that's kind of funny, like, building the cannon here kind of feels a little bit worthless, but we do have a two-fact coming in. This cannon is going to be worthwhile. Now, the one thing we're going to need... Actually, this is a very good point. How does Vadi push through this? Ah, uh, he's going to drop. Okay, I was going to say, like, if he pushes through the eggs, he can't break these. There's no way of forcing them to die, so... We do have the Templar Archives coming up. It's very, very late, given the fact he was trying to hide it from his opponent. But these cannons should actually help at least defend his natural, but the main is going to be the main problem. And the other thing is, with two facts you're building a lot of units, 
but one dropship takes a long time to ferry units across. Now, one thing you can do as Terran here is drop on this high ground that is in range of the cannon, but it's still a very good addition to the map. Now, if you haven't seen Core Breach, but you've seen in a Coven, this is basically the main difference. Well, the cannon is just in range. Oh, it keeps missing. Oh my goodness, the world's luckiest tank. Oh my goodness. Well, this is a dead base. There we go. But the thing is, there is going to be a shuttle coming out of this robo. At least there should be. Okay, there is a shuttle. Thank goodness. He can use the shuttle to pick up some units and kill this. But by going for so much tech so early, he's actually not got any units. He's only just now got a DT. I think this could just be game over. There's four vultures in his main. There's mines. The DTs are going to go down to the mines. The probes are just getting completely destroyed. He's done a pretty good job so far, but oh no. This is a dangerous position for these mines. Oh no. Oh no, this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. Okay. Ooh. That could have been so much worse. That could have been so, so, so much worse. Oh, the DTs coming out and dying to the... Oh, lucky. But the Vultures are still alive. The Nexus has fallen. The Citadel is going to be next on the agenda here. And I mean, this game is pretty much done. This two-factor has done all the damage it needed to do and more. And really playing to the map here is Vardy. It's a shame for Red because it means they won't be making it into the playoffs. But I know there's going to be some players or all of the players on Clan Revolution here who are going to be very, very happy with the outcome of this game. Clan Revolution was so, so close to dropping out the playoffs in the very last week. And because of this victory from IRK, they're going to do it. They're going to make it. They're going to... They're going to survive long enough to get into the playoffs. We've got more vultures dropping down, more mines coming outside of the gateways. And I think this is just game over. It looks like we do have... Oh, we've got DTs in the main. Oh my goodness. This is actually a really weird position, but the tr <laughs> trouble is he can't... He can't deal with the units back. Oh my goodness, he built a... He built a vessel. The vessel is actually going to win him the game. Oh my good. Well, everything else is going to win in the game, but the DTs can't win anymore because of the vessel. This is actually a clutch vessel here. What a play. Vody definitely playing this perfectly. Absolutely everything went right for him. GG. SOS, taps, uh, SOS toss taps out with just one probe remaining. And Red, uh, sorry, IRK are going to win the series 3-1. Okay, so that was a relatively short uh, SOS toss. I'm not too sure. I need to find that out and then put it in the database. Um, but next up, we've got the M versus Net Wars. But to look at the results, Cryoc took a very good win over True Touch in game number one, uh, which made it look like they could have won the series. Talent losing to Oya. Oya playing that out perfectly. Horatos, unfortunately, not getting to play his game versus DeWalt due to a walkover. And Vody versus SOS Toss. Vody played the map perfectly. He played his opponent opponent perfectly as well. And SOS Toss tried something risky. He tried to go for a DT drop, but unfortunately it didn't come out fast enough uh, to defend against the two facts. So this is a good time to take a quick break while we get ready for uh, series number two. Uh, we have another great set of maps, or uh, bleh, sorry, another great set of teams coming up. If NetWars can win this series, they are going to secure themselves a position in the semi-final. And if uh, DM can take the win, NetWars are going to fall below IRK in the seedings, depending on how that game goes. So without further ado, let's get in to series number two when we get back after this short break. Now, uh, just once again, a huge thank you to our sponsors, Matrino, Liquipedia, and Esport Fund for being so damn great. See you guys soon. 